Uh, what's up? Uh, probably six semi-candidates. I will start with the science. Look no further. Revision UG is the answer. Uh, please subscribe, share, and follow. Uh, together we can. I'm your teacher today. I'm called Hakim, and I'm going to take you through uh, the science syllabus right from primary um, uh, six term one up to primary six at uh, term three. Uh, so if you are here, uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe and share a plus following to get the latest updates um position you can go to the website of Jitan uh, and our website it is revision UG okay so let us get started so our theme it is world of living things and we are going to look at cal uh, classification of animals uh, but before we go to classification of animals let us first understand uh, what does this term mean living things so a living thing is something uh, that has life so anything that has life and it carries on what to call a uh, life processes it is said to be uh, a living organism or a living living thing and then these things they have what we call characteristics or the features uh, that make them a living uh, for example you can take the, the trees they do have life when we have birds we have um, animals like cats rats we have worms we have insects all those are said to be a uh, living things but why do we call them living things all right so let us first go through um, uh, their characteristics one uh, they carry out what we call respiration so all living organisms all those things that carry out a uh, respiration we call them a uh, living things in brief a uh, respiration is the process by which these organisms are uh, use the food they have eaten and break them into uh, energy uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide so uh, this respiration is very important because it provides these living organisms uh, with energy in order to carry on uh, their life processes so anything to be called a living thing it has to carry out respiration or a living organism can carry out uh, can do what a respire and the number two these living organisms they do move so they carry out uh, movements and we have two types of movements one we have what we call uh, a locomotion so to locomote a uh, locomote it means the living organism is displacing itself as a whole it moves as a whole so from this point to this point then what we call moving to move it is just as uh, some parts of the body are just moving for example when tree leaves shake that is movement but when an animal or a cow moves from point a it comes point b then that one's what we call locomotion so all lo living organisms can carry out movements or as well as what we call a locomotion anything to be called a living organism apart from moving respiring uh, they do feed so they do feed uh, in order to nourish their bodies to supply their bodies with the nutrients necessary to maintain their uh, life life processes and uh, then again Apart from feeding, these living organisms must multiply in a number, so they increase in a number, and that characteristic is what we call reproduction. So living organisms uh, reproduce or produce young ones similar to them in order to increase in a number. Different organisms have different mechanisms of reproduction, uh, for example, birds. So these birds reproduce by laying eggs. Then us, we human beings, uh, monkeys, gorillas, bats, rats, sheep, goats, and so on. Uh, we produce our young ones alive but why do we do that uh, in order to increase any number so stones they don't do that uh, number five apart from reproduction feeding movement and respiration uh, these living organisms are uh, responded to stimuli so they respond to stimuli which we call irritability so once they are um, affected by a certain condition in the environment they have to respond to for example when um, an animal is under sunshine so it is being heated so it is going to move away when you feel thirsty what are you going to do you are going to drink water when you are feeling cold what are you going to do you are going to drink something hot or you're going to put on a sweater so that thing you are doing you're responding to coldness in the environment and that's what we call irritability so living organisms respond to a stimuli for example you have flowers flowers at night some of the flowers uh, on some plants grows at night so they're responding to a uh, 
uh, to the darkness now when it shines in the morning the these flowers are going to open so uh, they are also responding to other conditions in their environment uh -huh. so that is what we call responding to what we call other stimuli and then these living organisms uh, apart from responding to the stimulus uh, in the environment, they undergo what you call growth. So they do grow. And to grow, it means to increase in e size. So it is irreversible. Irreversible increase in e size. So they increase uh, in size. And how important is this one? Uh, they are just changing in order to get prepared for other uh, life plo uh, processes. So living organisms respire. Living, uh, living organisms do move. They feed they reproduce uh, they uh, respond to stimuli and also uh, they grow and lastly living organisms carry out excretion so they excrete after carrying on all those life processes and uh, then those life processes produce or yield what we call unnecessary materials in their bodies or waste materials within uh, their bodies like urine like sweat like lactic acid urea and so on ammonia very many so these ones they are going to um to disturb other life processes within the organism thus they need to be removed so that removal of those waste materials from the body of an organism uh, it's called excretion so living organisms carry out to uh, excretion or they do uh, excrete now my dear Lana uh, it is very wrong to say a uh, living organisms die no if it dies it will no longer excrete it will no longer grow it will not respond to stimuli no reproduction um uh, neither feeding so this one is not a characteristic of living organism my dear Lana, after han, uh, having looked at these organisms i mean these um, characteristics uh, let me hope that you can easily identify the living organisms within uh, your environment so our topic today uh, we are now uh, the theme is saying the world of living things so we have seen what makes them to be uh, living organisms then we are now going to classify them and uh, classification depends on what you call uh, kingdoms uh, these living organisms they are uh, classified uh, into a uh, big class uh, the class called the kingdom and there are five kingdoms one we are having those ones that behave like animals which are also why we call them animals we have those ones that are plants then they make the plant kingdom then we have those ones that are tiny and they are unicellular so we call them the protoctista so they make what we call the protoctista kingdom and again we have those ones that do not make their own food and they resemble plants and they're not plants so they are under the fungi uh, kingdom and again we have those ones that are microscopic and they are causatives or meaning that they can cause diseases uh, they make the monera kingdom so uh, these are the five kingdoms of these living organisms the animal kingdom plant kingdom protoctista the fungi and the, the monera so our main concern today is to look at the animal kingdom so uh, we are going to look at what to call the animal kingdom and these animals we are going to classify them uh, that's why now we are going to look at the classification uh, remember uh, this word the classification means the grouping of living things together according to their common characteristics so even these ones were put together as animals because they had the characteristics in common and now when we are looking at these characteristics we base on their habit how do they behave how do they feed where do they stay their habitat and again how do they reproduce the type of skeleton they have the type of fertilization they do have and how do they respire so we look at all these features then we say ah, ah this one is an animal so and this one is also an animal and we put them together under what you call a kingdom for animals then it becomes kingdom animalia okay now after uh, we start after um, scientists studied this then uh, they came up with the key uh, characteristics as to why they were called animals one anything to be called an animal it should be with a mouth part uh, a mouth part for feeding meaning that it cannot make its own food so it has to be with the mouth parts that's why uh, we say a mosquito is an animal why 
it has mouth parts for feeding uh, as well as a rat is also an animal why it has mouth parts for feeding it cannot make its own food then another common characteristic as to why these ones are called animals is that uh, and these animals have what to call limbs you know limbs these are legs and hands so when you look at the mosquitoes the insects they do have them rats they do have them human beings have them so uh, thus we are calling them animals another one these animals are multicellular so their bodies are made up of very many uh, cells remember the best kind of life is a cell a cell so uh, animals are multicellular they have very many limbs and they have mouthy uh, parts so after um, uh, uh, after you have looked at these characteristics that are making this anything to be called an animal then these animals they have different habits they have different feeding uh, mechanisms they have different fertilizations and they have different uh, respiration mechanisms thus we are now going to classify uh, these animals so animals are classified into two uh, big groups so we have here the animal then these animals are classified into two a big groups one we have the animals that are called vertebrates eh? they are called the vertebrates and the opposite of vertebrates it is the invertebrate mm -hmm. it is the invertebrate so vertebrates these are animals that do have what you call a vertebral column a vertebral column then if you don't call this one a vertebral column uh, we can also call it a spine or a spinal cord then um, uh, these ones without a vertebral column we call them the invertebrates remember uh, a vertebral column it is within the back and it's very important in a way that inside there it has what we call a spinal cord and a spinal cord is connecting to the brain now uh, we, we are calling these ones vertebrates we are going to see why we are calling them vertebrates anything to be called a vertebrate obviously it has to be with the, a backbone it's also called a backbone or a vertebral column or a spine now the importance of a backbone is to protect the vertebra and to protect the spinal Code and this spinal cord is connecting the brain, and the brain is protected by a brain case. Therefore, a vertebrate, apart from being with a backbone, a vertebrate must be with what we call um, a brain case. So it has to be with a brain case. Now, let us look at this. Let us look at a mosquito and a rat. A mosquito does a mosquito have a backbone no it is not having a backbone thus a mosquito is an animal but under the class of inva invertebrate but when you look at a rat a rat has a backbone meaning that um if it has a backbone it has also a brainy case and apart from that one all vertebrates they have what you call an endoskeleton remember a skeleton uh, it is a framework of bones now the bones of these vertebrates are four inside that's what we call an endoskeleton so anything to be called a vertebrate has to be with an endoskeleton and also with a backbone and a plus a brain case and apart from that one all vertebrates have what you call bilateral uh, bilateral symmetrical bodies so they have what we call bilateral symmetrical bodies meaning that their bodies must be divided into two equal places so my dear student um, uh, these are the characteristics of vertebrates anything to be called a vertebrate has to be the backbone and endoskeleton a brain case and uh, its body must be bilaterally symmetrical meaning that we can divide its body into two equal halves that's why when we look at human beings we have two ears uh, two eyes two legs two hands so that when we divide you we can divide you into two equal uh, planes in into equal halves into different uh, planes okay so uh, then these vertebrates are again their father classified into two one we have what we call the warm blooded vertebrates and also the cold blooded vertebrates now these cold blooded vertebrates 
uh, these cold blooded vertebrates uh, we can also call them the homothermic so to, gather, to classify them under warm blooded we, div uh, we depended or we looked at the, the temperatures their body temperature so some animals they have constant body temperature others they have what we call varying body temperature thus now those as they are constant or those as that can maintain their body temperature constant uh, we are calling them warm blooded animals or warm blooded vertebrates and if you don't use warm blooded we can call them homoethams or homoethamic animals so uh, these ones that are cold blooded uh, they have their body temperature changing according to that of the environment thus we call them the poikiro thermic animals so they are poikiro thumbs or they are poikiro thermic now when you look at these um, warm blooded animals or warm blooded vertebrates are uh, further classified uh, these warm blooded vertebrates are further classified. Remember, we said we are having animal kingdom, then these animals are classified into two. We have what we call the vertebrates with the backbone, blowing case, and endoskeleton, plus being bilateral symmetrical. Then, here they have uh, we have what we call the invertebrates without a backbone. Then, now we are looking at vertebrates. Then, we have said these vertebrates are classified into two. Uh, we have what we call the warm blooded vertebrates, and these warm blooded vertebrates. Uh, their temperature is kept constant and we call them the homothermic vertebrates then these ones that are um, not warm blooded we call them uh, cold blooded vertebrates and their temperature changes according to that of the environment and then if we don't call them cold blooded we can call them the poikilotherms or the poikilothermic animals now we are now going to start with the warm blooded animals these ones are further classified into two one the class of birds and the class of mammals then we are going to understand why are they called birds and why are these ones called mammals then are uh, these poikilotherms are classified into three one uh, we have the class of reptiles then we have the class of the fish then lastly we have what we call the amphibians or the class of amphibians so where we are going we are now going to learn uh, we are going to look at one by one in in me a detail so that we get to know why is it called a reptile why is it called a fish why is this one an amphibian what makes it different from a mammal what makes it different from a reptile so uh, this is what we call a classification of animals so animals are classified into vertebrates then invertebrates then warm blooded cold blooded then birds and mammals so uh, please my dear Lana, i uh, I still uh, make uh, uh, urge you to just go and subscribe to our YouTube channel that is revision uh, ug.com uh, please after subscribing share and follow to get the latest updates then please uh, uh, click on the link there uh, so that you get the latest notes well uh, organized and the quizzes over there